All right, everyone, welcome back from the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, June 14, 2022. If you like the content, give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, etc. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. So, anyways, really, really boring, quiet day here for the markets. Spiders flat, Q's up about 40 basis points here. Dow flat, Russell flat. Look at everything on my screen here. It's all sideways. The only thing that kind of moved a little bit today was Tesla. Um, but even on my other screens over here, pretty much everything that's not a commodity is flat. Every every equity, you know, this is just textbook theta burn, typical OPEX week stuff. And the market is really, you know, it's all eyes on the Fed now. And it is now expected that the Fed is going to hike by 90 uh, 95 it's 95 percent chance that the fed hikes by 75 basis points here um, that is what the market expects the fed typically does what the market expects it to do so i don't expect there to be anything different tomorrow that appears to be what the market is trying to price in or has priced in over the last couple of days uh, we've talked about we take a look at the daily here you know, I talked about this yesterday about we're you know we're probably going to have a washout here and um, I give you some downside targets you know the 360 365 area perhaps uh, if we go back to the spiders here and we look at you know it's basically your previous all-time high right there that's where you broke out of that was also the Pfizer gap as well if you guys remember that one that big Pfizer gap so that would be a very good area and then then there's the 200 week moving average which of course would be good support as well there on the spiders um and really the same kind of levels there on the triple q's uh i believe there's a level and anyway, we talked about this in the private stream yesterday yeah this level right here so 260 on the triple q's right there um and that coincides with that 200 week moving average as well so a little support in this area um i think that more so it's not about really for me it's not about price it's about time so time wise I think we're very close to a bottom. I don't know if that, you know, I, I just gave you those kind of areas there on the spiders and the cues. We could go a lot lower, but time-wise, we're close to a bottom, more so than price that, I'm, that I can at least accurately forecast. And that's going off the cycle work, again, stuff that I talked about with members private yesterday, which is really, really awesome stuff. Um, makes me believe that we're very close to a bottom and a capitulation kind of move. And I, I mentioned this yesterday a little bit, uh, the VIX here finally behaving like the VIX, right? So we're finally getting, you know, red across the board. You know, energy isn't propping the market up for once. You know, XLE is flattish today, but we look at XLE, you know, it's taking a hit and that's causing the VIX to, to spike a little bit. Um, the VIX will spike when everything is red. So we haven't really had that. We've had kind of a uh, an anemic VIX over the last couple of months, but now we're finally getting that spike. So I think we're getting close to the beginning of a capitulation move here a for the cyclical patterns that i've been following but another thing you know just a lot of the time you just got to break it down logically here so i noticed this stuff happening and you know i, I question these things right so we had a 1.62 percent gap from thursday to friday and then a 2.49 gap from friday's close to monday's open and then what do we see here on the intraday so let's just look at the 10 minute here you know selling in the first hour a little bit of selling in the in the last half hour but that was after a little bit of a rally and then yesterday you know major gap down a little bit of selling in the first hour then we kind of rallied back up and a little bit of selling at the end but the point is and especially with today like it's been totally anemic we're seeing 90 percent of the legwork being done pre-market so what does that tell you it tells you that the big boys don't have a lot of shares to unload in fact they probably don't have anything to unload and that tells you that shorts are what put are what is pushing this market lower it's not institutional investors unloading billions of dollars with the shares if that were the case they'd be dumping during market hours not pre-market okay, if you have 20 billion dollars of uh, equity to unload you can't do that pre-market without crashing the stock it costs you a couple million dollars maybe 10 million dollars 20 million dollars to push this the futures lower pre-market and get that big gap down and if you're already short going ahead of that well you're really just kind of patting your own back and 
putting wind in your own sails. But if you were unloading, you know, you this, you know, this type of selling was more unloading where we're selling during market hours, you know, same thing, you know, here, for instance, you know, that you could make a case there and in this kind of area, but we're selling, you know, we're, we're gapping down with, again, it doesn't take any volume, doesn't take much capital to gap this down. And then we're selling a little bit during market hours, but we're not seeing, you know, we're not seeing these major crazy moves. We're not seeing panic type moves. The volume is actually lighter than yesterday's here. And really, all things considered, 170 million shares yesterday is not even that much. So it's not like we're seeing uh, major dumping. And what that, again, what that says to me is that if shorts are the only thing keeping this market lower, then, you know, as soon as we get that washout event, shorts are going to get squeezed and that's how you're going to get that rally. Um, the, you know, it's not like the big boys are going to wait for the Fed to start hiking rates. They were dumping a long time ago. So really the only thing keeping this market lower is shorts, which, you know, you have to respect it, obviously, because they're in control right now. But basically what I'm trying to say is I think we're very close to a bottom here you know everybody who wanted to sell has already sold um and anybody who's shorting down here is really just chasing so we'll see what we get out here again you guys know the downside targets at least the near term again the market really just kind of paused here today and waited on the fed I mean, again again looking at the intraday look at this tight range this is uh this is pretty ridiculous i actually turned my screens off for a few hours and just uh you know, took off for a bit because, you know, there was really nothing going on today, but came back to the close here and we'll cover some of the sectors here like we usually do. In any case, semis here, again, flat, just like everything else you saw them on my screen here, holding this lower trend line here. Again, a pause day, uh, cloud software. Oracle did report yesterday. Um, that did help out a little bit, although Oracle did fade off the highs and it came back up there nicely. So, these cloud stocks, uh, CRM, Salesforce reported a few weeks ago, and that helped out the IGV here with cloud software, and Oracle had good earnings as well. So some of these cloud computing names are, are actually holding up okay, and we're starting to see the IGV outperform just a little bit. Notice how it hasn't taken out the year-to-date low, whereas you know semiconductors already have and the triple Qs already have. So you know IGV holding up nicely, so um, maybe a sector to look at uh, potentially going long you know when we when we get a bottom here so keep that on your radar Dow transports actually had a decent little pop today if we look on the intraday had a nice green candle in the first 10 minutes and it just kind of just consolidated there so maybe there's a little bit more upside here tomorrow for Dow transports you do have kind of a you know a bullish inside bar there on the daily although you did come way off the highs we'll see what we get again it's going to be all eyes on the fed i expect the market to be very quiet tomorrow morning uh at least until 2 p.m and then that's when the fireworks happen so you know that's basically the super bowl of finance here rates here continuing to price in a major rate hike so i mean what can you say rates are pushing higher uh, i believe said yesterday the 10-year you know, this is kind of the, the next big level I'm looking for for the 10-year. So 3.66. The 30-year I don't think has as much upside. Um, there we go. So 30-year, I think it's, you know, 30-year is very close here. This pivot top should be good resistance. You got this sell bar ahead of that. You're just piercing through that 200-month moving average. I think the 30-year is a lot closer to a top than the 10-year. But we'll see what we get again. The Fed is going to throw a wrench in everything. Basically, the market is priced in the worst-case scenario here. Um, so bear that in mind. HYG or high-yield debt, basically an inside day, so pausing there. But again, this obviously has huge implications um, based on whatever the Fed says tomorrow. Uh, XLF here, so FINS. Um, Again, just like everything else, kind of flattish to lower. Um, we'll see if XLF can hold this trend line. So on the weekly, that's going back to a, a previous high. You had a nice high pivot, good support, but the problem is you came down and you basically tested it already. You know, you, you basically kissed it, essentially. You got very close, and now you're getting down. There. So I think it has a good chance to get to that 200-week moving average, and then after that, you know, you're looking at this range here, you know, where this, this chop, and then possibly this lower trend line as well. So again, fins. You know, there, that, that inverted yield curve is not, you know, it's not quite there yet. Um, we got very close to the twos and tens, uh, 3.483 on the 10 year. And then, uh, oh no, that is inverted now. So, excuse me. 
Am I reading that right? Yeah, it looks like that is inverted. So we do have an inversion on the 2 and 10. I'm surprised I didn't hear about that. So anyway, well, inverted yield curve, not a good thing. Not for financials, not for anybody. Um, and the longer it plays out, the worse it's going to get. Obviously, high yield debt as well, same kind of thing. So, you know, really bad conditions. The only thing I can say here is that, again, that really the only thing pushing the market lower right now is shorts. And it does seem that the market has tried to do a good job of pricing in a lot of this. Again, like we said a minute ago with yields, I mean, look at the surge here. So it's, it's basically pricing in the Fed being mega hawks tomorrow. So we'll see what we get. Um, in any case, let's move on here. Home Builders, XHB. Again, flattish to lower like everything else. You know, nothing really too crazy going on. ITB, same thing. BNQ. You know, pushing a little bit lower again. Uh, I believe it's at 85. That's going to be the level, the next big level that this is going to want to go and test there on the VNQ. Crude uh, did start out green today and then kind of rolled over a little bit. Still above all the moving averages. We'll see what it does uh, here moving forward. Uh, Biden released some more SPRs. Um, it's probably not going to do anything, but crude coming down a little bit here. The big story is Nat Gas. So down almost 20% here at one point today. All the way down to seven bucks. I was very tempted to buy at this trend line here uh, for a quick swing, but I think the better level is 650 to me personally. And if you look at every time that Natty has hit this 20 MA or hit, hit this trend line or their support or had these little flash crashes, it, it, it rebounds like that. Today it hasn't really rebounded that fast. So I don't, you know, it could get a bounce tomorrow. I wouldn't rule it out. It's got a good shot, but look at what it's doing intraday here. You know, you're coming down and now you're you're flagging bearish here so i i think this has a good shot of getting down to that 650 area maybe even six bucks so um we'll see what we get on natty it could bounce up but you know big sell off here and that's why i keep telling you guys every single day in here don't chase energy don't do it there's a closing bell um and again there's higher price floors in energy now i'm not gonna say that there isn't but you chasing stuff that goes parabolic never ends well. And, you know, XLE is no different. I told you guys about that. If we get another leg down in the markets, I don't care. They, these guys can't hide an XLE forever. You know, margin selling will take over and this will drop just like everything else. You know, same thing with the XOP, uh, OIH, even the uranium plays CCJ. Um, dipping down a little bit, you know, they, they could easily lose this trend line if we have a washout in the broad market. So be careful of that. Again, I preach it every single day because this is what happens. I've seen it happen. You know, I've been doing this a long time and I've seen this happen many times. People say, oh, can we buy Natty? Can we buy XLE up here? No, no, don't. You, you know, you, you bought up here, you're already down 30% on that position. So don't chase, don't use emotion wait you will get a chance to buy again i promise so anyways dollar index continuing higher a little bit um you know again markets were flattish to lower yields were higher so dollar up uh, i believe i said 108.50 yesterday that was kind of the level the next big big level for the dollar if it does continue higher but again dollar index basically pricing in a very hawkish fed gold again lower again today um, and again, the story here is that essentially yields pushing higher could cause a recession. That's kind of the, the negative there for gold. And it's more reflective in the industrial metals like silver, copper. You can see copper performing much worse. It raced to that whole move that we had uh, a week or two ago, and then some now. And then platinum basically back down to 52-week lows and palladium getting closer to 52-week lows, although it did scratch out a gain here today. So... Metals are a little bit on the weaker side, but, you know, again, gold has held up a lot better than a lot of other sectors have. So, you know, it's doing its job as a safe haven play. Anyways, Bitcoin here. I think this is a little intriguing here. I think Bitcoin's actually kind of attractive here with this candle. If it can hold this tail candle with this heavy volume, it's got a good shot to rally up here. Maybe even to back to, let's say about 27,800, maybe 28,000. I'd say it's got a good shot to do that. If it can hold this tail candle low, you had good volume there, nice reversal. Still looking for it to go to 18 at least, but you know you got very close here. It's oversold. Um, and again, the Fed could really, you, we could pump. I would not rule out a pump on the Fed, um, especially given that it is OPEX week. It is quad witch. 
So there's a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of puts being bought. By the way, speaking of puts being bought, let me pull this up for you. Because this is probably the most I've ever seen here. But if we look at the SPY puts expiring Friday, this is, you guys remember in, um, you know, March and April, man, I said, yeah, man, look at the open interest. There's like 120,000 open interest on these strikes. Take a look at the open interest on the 340 and 345 strikes. 354,000, 204,000, 172,000 traded today. This was this, the open interest was this high yesterday. So this wasn't just from today. Um, very, very ridiculous. And it is diverged from the SPX. The SPX options do not have this open interest. The SPX option is concentrated more at the 4,000 level. So that's why I said yesterday, it would not surprise me one bit. I'm not expecting it to happen, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we did rip heads off by Friday. Um, because that's where the market makers have the most amount of open interest position. There's a big straddle there at 4,000. And there is a gamma level at 390 so if we break 390 and get above that market makers will have to hedge to the upside so again i'm not saying it happens but it is opex week it's quad witch we have the fomc anything can happen be on your toes again like i always say every day don't over leverage yourself don't be a cowboy in this market because you will get shot anyways guys i'm gonna wrap it up here come find me on carnivore and i'll talk to you all tomorrow